We're just a few days away from WWDC 2023, where Apple is poised to make its software and platform announcements for the year. And as a photographer, I thought I'd take a look at what we're expecting that's going to matter to us. Aaron here from techphotoguy.com. And as an Apple nerd and a photographer, when I look at WWDC, we need to think about the fact that this is Apple's worldwide developer conference. This is when it makes its software and platform announcements for the year. They're going to introduce a new version of iOS for iPhones and iPads. They're going to introduce a new version of Mac OS for our computers. And the big expectation this year is that they're going to introduce XR OS supposedly for the Reality XR headset, which is going to be Apple's entry into the VR, AR, wearable headset world. So we have to sit here and think, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? What does it mean for me as a photographer? And what I would say as photographers is we need to realize that most of the news coming out of WWDC, the big headlines are probably going to have nothing to do with photography this year. This year, if things go as planned, it's going to be all about the AR VR headset experience, what that's going to mean for developers and what that's going to mean for the general public. But that said, Apple likes to talk about how it's a photography company. Apple executives talk about how photography is super important to Apple. We can't deny that a big part of the success of the iPhone is the fact that it's a fantastic camera to carry in your pocket. And so when Apple looks at its software platforms, whether that's macOS, iOS, or the others, the photography experience and the photography software is a key part of that. So what I'm expecting to see is that the big headlines are going to be the AR VR platform. But when we look at the announcements for Mac OS and when we look at the announcements for iOS, I'm expecting to see some new photography things. And the name of the game this year in the photography world, uh, you all know this, unless you've been completely asleep for the last year, is artificial intelligence. You know, we've seen big AI developments with generative AI. Just last week or a couple weeks ago, we saw Adobe announce the integration of Adobe Firefly generative AI into the new generative fill feature in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I think we need to temper our expectations here. Apple doesn't make photography software on the level of Photoshop. They arguably had software on the level of Lightroom many, many years ago when they had Apple Aperture. RIP. But at this point, Apple Photos is a consumer and maybe prosumer photography experience. That said, in order to continue giving a good experience to those prosumers and consumers, Apple needs to continue integrating AI technology into that software. I'm not expecting that we're going to see, you know, object insertion type generative AI, right? I don't think in the next version of macOS, you're going to fire up Apple Photos and be like, hey, you know, put a giant robot in the background of this image. That said, what I'm expecting to see are some more AI powered features to help us catalog our images in Apple Photos and hopefully to give us some more power with AI in photo editing. One of the big features in last year's version of iOS was the fact that you could, you know, tap on the subject in a photo and drag it out of the image. It was doing that object recognition. It was doing that subject separation and pulling that photo out. I would expect to continue to see those types of photography editing enhancements in Apple Photos, you know. We've seen a lot of editing enhancements in the Adobe world when it comes to things like AI masking. We've seen sky replacements become commonplace in the world of uh, Luminar and Adobe Photoshop and these other applications. I wouldn't be surprised to see those types of things start to take place in the Apple world as well. Apple wants to have a good solid photography experience and a good solid photography ecosystem because that drives iPhone sales. One of the reasons a lot of people upgrade their iPhones is for the better camera system. It's the main reason why I upgrade my iPhone every year. I want the top-notch camera. 
But even if you're not upgrading every year, even if you're only upgrading every couple of years, every three or four years, the main driver for that is the camera system. And that camera system is not just the hardware, but it's also the software that goes with it. So as we look to WWDC, expect to see AI enhancements in the photography software. Expect to see even more of them in the software that gets announced with the new iPhones in September. I'm also curious to see where AI might make its way into other software applications or platforms. We've seen decent announcements in the last couple of months uh, from DaVinci with Resolve and from Adobe with Premiere. I think we're about due for a big Final Cut Pro announcement on the desktop. They released the iPad version a couple of weeks ago. And I feel like it's time for Apple to up its game there. And I expect that we're going to see, uh, you know, text transcription editing and some other AI powered features in that software. So I'm eager for WWDC. I'm going to be back here on this channel with some reactions right after the keynote. That's Monday, June 5th. The keynote starts at 10 a.m. I will have a video up that afternoon with my take on what this all means for photographers once we see what's actually been announced. So come back on Monday, tune in to find out how that works. Just hit the subscribe button. Hopefully YouTube will notify you, but if not, come back here and check your manually. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple announces. Until then, take care.